going on guys welcome back to another video so in today's video we're going to install a closed carbon intake from turner motorsports on my b58 it's a 340 so this will work for any of the 40i engines b58s and uh, yeah it should be a similar install process to all the other intakes for this car but a few more quirks because uh, it's from turner motorsports we're going to ditch the plastic in the engine bay and then install some new carbon fiber CAD design, so that's computer aided design intake from Turner. So, yeah, these guys got it down. It's going to be dialed in with that like OEM plus finish and fitment. So, yeah, I can't wait. So, I opted for the closed box. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's more efficient in keeping temps down. And here in Florida, where it gets up to like 100 degrees during the summer and most of the year. So, it's going to be way more efficient for me. A closed box will be a little bit more quiet, but I mean, I don't really mind that. I don't like too much intake noise. If you're about intake noise, I highly suggest you look into like the MST intake, as I've heard that that's like pretty loud and I've seen from other cars too. The closed box also keeps the filter cleaner for longer and you know, it adds more carbon and more glossiness to the engine bay, so can't complain there. So the carbon fiber should keep like the overall temps lower than metal because you know, metal retains heat and uh, especially more than plastic, so way better than both and it's of course more money uh, you could get a burger motorsports intake for like a hundred something dollars i think but you know that's just the filter part and you don't replace the inlet pipe or anything like that i'm only going for quality mods in this car and this intake is no exception so without further ado let's get in the install so first things first you're going to want to download the pdf they'll have linked in the description below it's a step-by-step -step install guide from turner themselves so you'll want to lay out all the parts, familiarize yourself with the install process uh, before you start the job, because that'll make it so much easier. All right, so I want to start by removing this air box right here. So we need to loosen this with a six millimeter and then get this clip out of here too, this connection. Connector, you can take a trim tool, place that in there. Actually, it came all the way out. That's fun. I'll just take that to the side. Good thing I didn't break it. So, once that clip is out, you just want to push down on this tab right here. And take that sensor out. Alright, now once that's out, we can go ahead and kind of remove this air box. Get that off like that. And then it's just attached with some grommets on the bottom. So you just kind of want to yank up. I'm still pretty weak from my surgery, so I'm going to let my brother do it. Yank it up, yep. All right, air box out. So you want to leave these stock rubber mounts in here and they can come off with the intake box, so just keep that in mind. And then we want to remove this down here using a 16 millimeter long socket. So now we need to remove this intake right here, this part. And it's being held in by a very annoying clamp down there. So you just need to get a tool to reach that, and it's a seven millimeter. It'll fit over it. So just get in there with a little tiny ratchet. All right, so we got the other intake tube out right here. So definitely don't want to pry on this part, <laughs> but that's okay. That's going to be replaced anyways. And so yeah, you just want to make sure this is totally loosened. I know it's a pain to get to, probably the hardest part of this install, but you gotta do it. And then you gotta kind of pull on it pretty hard, maybe spin it a few times, twist it, because uh, that thing's gonna be seated on there pretty good. So once we got that out, we can put on this coupler and tighten down the bottom clamp, and then we can leave the top clamp on it loosened so we can adjust the fitment of everything. snug. All right, now we want to install this expanding nut right into here. All 
so just like so. And then we want to take this clip, this body panel bolt clip, and you just want to slide it right here, right in there, right behind the passenger headlight. Slide that clip on there. We want to take our another bush, bushing housing, or I don't know what you call this, but OEM BMW part, and you want to stick in this metal part in here. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then I guess this just like rests right there on the bottom, so it provides a mount right there. And that'll get screwed in. So now we're going to install these grommets into the heat shield. So there's a larger one and a smaller one. So the smaller one goes here on the outside, which I guess there's one already in there. So we'll just install this larger one right here on the face. And you just kind of want to push it in, go all the way around. It's kind of a pain, but just got to keep pushing, keep working it. So there we go, we got that one in. And now apparently we need to put in our center sleeves. So go ahead and open these up. So I guess you just push these into the grommets themselves, right in the middle. On each one. This one seems to be a lot bigger. Just gonna have to force it. So we got those in. All right, so at this point, we're gonna install this optional gold, I guess, like heat shield sticker. So I'll probably just peel this half back and then get this all lined up, stuck on there, and then peel this side. All right, so we got the sticker on. Looks pretty good. All the holes are exposed, lined up properly. So it really helped just to Start with this side because you got to put it over here and then slowly start to peel it off and then fold it over. So, that looks pretty sick. So, now we need to install this into the car. All right, so we got our box in. You want to line up this body panel bolt right here and then this uh, nut back here with the grommet and then this grommet down here. So, we'll probably start by screwing in this bottom one since it doesn't really want to line up very well. Then you also want to make sure that this plate down here is below your this air intake scoop. So, just, so we'll go ahead and use our M6 by 16 with the countersink and the washer. We'll go ahead and put that bottom in first. What helped is to use this kind of like trim tool to get in here and like pry this over the rubber washer while you can fit in the screw. I'm gonna go ahead and screw that in. Get that nice and snug. As you can see on the instruction manual, it says an M6 by 20 for this screw right here, closest to the headlight. But they sent me an M16, M6 by 16, so that is too large. So we're gonna go ahead and go to true value and hopefully they can have one of these we can screw in, but in the meantime, we will just move on without it, and then we'll go ahead and install this one into the upper portion right here. We're gonna try this way, just with an extension, so I can get it in there by hand. Oh yeah, that's, that's working wonders. All right, go ahead and get the ratchet. So when got a correctly sized screw from Ace Hardware or True Value, just whichever store. Those stores are way more handy instead of like a Home Depot or Lowe's. All right, so now we want to put in our intake inlet pipe. So you just want to shove that into the silicone right there. 
to that grommet and then make sure that we got our clamp on there too and that it is in the direction that it's easily accessible. So tighten it down. See if you can rotate it before you get all tight. And you just want to make sure that's snug in there and that these holes over here line up so we can put the screws in of oh, this brace right here that extends from the piping. So now we just need to screw those in. Actually, first we'll just go ahead and snug this down, get this all tight and clamped on there. Ah, no, I, we'll put the screws in first, so we'll have more wiggle room. So we got the top one in, we'll put the bottom one in, and it has this M5 screw with the washer. All right, now we can install the actual intake filter. Boom, boom, boom. So it's got even a bigger clamp on here. to make sure that it's easily accessible for us. Right up top. Slides right in. So I think right there is good. Start tightening up my hand a little bit. All right, so I just wanna make sure we got pretty good placement all the way around. And then this is an eight millimeter. Let's go ahead and get on there. Make sure, get a little tight. Not too tight with the drill. And that is all good. It's being supported in the air, not touching anything. All right, now we're gonna disconnect this map sensor housing that was the actual map sensor and just use a t20 get both these screws out and you won't be needing these screws because we'll be replacing them with the ones turner sent us and you want to be very careful with the map sensor because it's pretty delicate from what i understand I do not want to drop this and it'll go right in here only goes one way. And as you can see, that is not the way. This is the way. <laughs> All right, so we'll use the screws they provided. So once we get these screws in here by hand, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in our sensor. Slide our little locking guy back in there. Here we go. Thank the Lord. All right, now we want to use a super small hex tool. Excuse the rust. <laughs> we'll go ahead and lightly tighten down each one. Don't want to go too tight. Just want to make sure we get both of them snug first. Snug, make sure this one is too. All right. So we got our math sensor connected and bolted down. So now we can work on putting in the top of the box. So go ahead and use this bushing that they provided to get right up in here. All right, so now we're gonna put on the last and final piece of this project. And it just goes in, this uh, thing goes in this grommet. And then we got four more screws and washers along here that line up with the heat shield. So we'll just place that accordingly into there. And then we got this cord right here. Uh, I think we can try to move over because see how there's this indention. So that will work like that. Make sure these go in. Lining up very beautifully. Push in on that grommet. And we are good to screw in those final bolts. The 
tool and for this one I just want to get it started by hand and be very careful not to drop the freaking screw perfect so the only thing I can find to really get in there is this hex tool so just go ahead and painstakingly oh no we're good all right that's tight enough so i completely forgot about this little rubber trim piece i guess you can open it up and it goes along this edge so I don't know why it's necessary, but I guess it looks cleaner that way. And uh, it's just a pain in the butt to get on there because you can see it's so tight. All right, so just toyed with this for like five minutes and kind of coming to the conclusion that this is way too small. Uh, even in the instructions, this rubber piece in the seal looks a lot bigger because it won't like fit on this very easily. And even if I get it on there, it's not going to stay on because it's not thick enough not large enough so just gonna do without that for now we got the job done and intake is installed it took me a little longer just because i'll you know i'm filming the process but it should only take you like one hour if you're skilled and know what you're doing or maybe two hours uh, there's a few things that you got to do for this intake that you probably don't have to do on other brands just from what I've seen online and then of course you can like wax this carbon I went ahead and just ceramic coated it with Gion rim same stuff I use on my rims because that is like a high heat resistant coating so I figured that would do the job for the intake and the engine bay and definitely will uh, so yeah the only thing left to do is start it up and see how it sounds All right, so we're gonna let the engine warm up a little bit, go for a drive. Honestly, the intake should make the exhaust louder too because you know it's more airflow. And yeah, it should by, by a little bit. But I also need to get some gas. And oddly enough, the check engine light did go away. For now at least. I mean, once I get on her and get some air going into those O2 sensors, I'm sure it'll come back up. But so far so good that's weird all right we're gonna put it in sport plus see if you guys can hear how it sounds With the intake installed, I mean, you should get a little bit more uh, throttle response because you're getting more airflow. And then with the downpipe and also the axle back, just more air, more air, more power. <laughs> there you go. There's that turbo flutter we all love to hear. so much harder now. All right guys, so that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video of the Turner Motorsport cold air intake install. Uh, yeah, it was overall pretty easy install process. I mean, it took me like half the day because I'm like halfway crippled. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it really wasn't bad, like no fitment issues. It's computer aided design, so it's like OEM plus fitment, no issues at all. And uh, I remember on my N20 motor with the last car, I was installing the engine intake, and that one like gave me some fitment troubles, just getting all the pipes aligned and everything. So this one was definitely a lot easier. You know, just take your time, make sure you're doing everything right. Uh, you don't want it to mess up anything and then have more problems down the road. And then also my check engine light hasn't come back on yet, so that's kind of wild. 
that installing a new intake takes away my check engine light from the O2 sensors. Maybe because it's has to do something with the flow. Man, I don't know. It's kind of weird. If you have any idea, let me know. But <laughs> that was strange. So yeah, guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more content to come. We got BMW Invasion end of February 19th and 20th. And yeah, we'll be participating in the rally on the 20th. That's gonna be a lot of fun. And I just can't wait to put some new faces to some builds that I've seen on Instagram. And also meet some of the homies that are coming down from out of state. So that's gonna be a blast. So make sure you stay tuned. We got a lot more detailing videos to do. We got a couple more mods in the books. So yeah, stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.